What's going on, Spit and Chicklets fans? Biz here. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the ECHL Player Relief Fund interview series. And this one is brought to you by Can I Brands, who is supporting your everyday health and wellness through their CBD products. Not only does Can I Brands make product that personally helped me, but they have kindly donated $10,000 to the ECHL Player Relief Fund and will also be donating 10% of all sales through our channels to the ECHL Player Relief Fund using the Biz30 promo code. That gives you a 30% discount on products across the entire website. And if you want to put more money in your pocket, head to canibrands.com and check out the Champions Program under the Ambassadors tab. We know times are not easy right now, so we're trying to give you guys as much content as we can. So we hope you enjoy this interview. And please, stay safe, and once again, Thank you to Ken Ibrahim. Our next guest is currently in his 11th NHL season already in its second go-around here in the city of brotherly love. The Flyers drafted him second overall way back in 07. Did three seasons here. Then he did six up in Toronto before returning to Philly to get paid as a UFA. He's cracked 30 goals twice. He averages about 23 tucks a year. Welcome to Spit and Chicklets for the first time, James Van Riemsdyke. Thanks for having me, boys. Appreciate it. Wow, we got to give stick taps to RA for that wonderful intro. Oh, thanks, guy. Thanks, that was guy. very, very impressive, RA. Good reading skills there. <laughs> Appreciate it. Get it written down. It's solid, though. I appreciate this it. This is a long time coming. We said to JVR already. I mean, this is a guy who has been a fan of Barstool for as long as I can remember. The first goalie challenge ever. First goalie challenge. Correct. Right? Where wow. you, where, where you, you know. That moron Portnoy is like, uh, who else could I get? And JVR was nice. I was like, what about Wit? What about Wit? He lives around here. And then he went on to chirp me saying I wasn't even in the league anymore. No worries. But still, you've been a fan of Barstool for a long time. Yep. Yeah. I remember actually the first time I got exposed to it was my, my recruiting trip to uh, UNH. Kevin Caps, that I'll even give him a shout out. I was at the Yellow House, the hockey house at uh, UNH. And, um, was up there. We were hanging out a bit before. That's like a CSI crime scene, eh? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like yellow house. <laughs> pretty like much. The DNA test. I'm pretty sure Should that thing is, uh, has been bulldozed <laughs> since. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah. I was I was there hanging out with the with the with the boys, and they were talking about this this New England website as it was then, and it's become obviously much more than that now. But uh, kind of been a fan of it ever since. So that, that kind of brings us back to the beginning. We usually go in chronological order while jumping around. I'm sure you've heard a couple of these, but. Start at the U.S. National Program. That's where I played. Thanks a lot. How do you end up going to UNH? I mean, they've obviously, they had a really good run. I think lately they've struggled a little bit, but you were wanted by everyone. So what ended up making that decision for you? Yeah, you know, I think uh, just going through that recruiting process, uh, I wanted to be a little bit closer to home after being in Ann Arbor for a couple of years. So growing up in New Jersey, uh, my parents were much easier to be able to make the ride out to New Hampshire. It was like six hours. And then Actually, on my last uh, recruiting trip there, I'll never forget it. It was like, uh, I think it was like a Sunday morning. It was, uh, I was there. Uh, j I, I think my brother had played a game there or something. I can't remember what we were there for before. But anyway, um, uh, I, I get there Sunday morning. The coaches are walking me through. We walk up to the press box, and I'm like, uh, we're, we're out there. We're chatting. He's like talking about what the team's going to look like, all this stuff. All of a sudden, the lights go out. I'm like, what the, what the hell's going on here? Like, oh, blue chip what style? What, what's going Get on here? So all of a here. sudden, they start playing two-step, and anyone who's played at UNH oh, knows yeah. that that's when the they kind of start playing that before uh, the team comes out. And then all of a sudden, I see uh, what I found out later was a very hungover. One of the student managers comes out waving the UNH flag like they do in the intro. <laughs> so they gave me a little preview of the intro uh, right before uh, I'd ever been to a game there before. So I had no idea what this was all about. So I thought this was Oh, you incredible. hadn't even seen a game yet? I didn't see the well, game You said yet. your last recruiting trip, as yeah. in that was your last school like to visit? Last, like, yeah, my last visit. Uh, yeah, exactly. So they like, saved it. It saved the yeah. best for last. Like, they I had visited the a few trips. others before that. And then, like you said, got a chance to go. That was my last one uh, doing that. And then and then after that, they did they did a pretty good job. So and that they, a night out there, and then that yeah, little blue chip special. Yeah, well, yeah, that was it was a good, good job. Yeah, hey, <laughs> that scene and what's the scene in? Uh, oh yeah, Jesus Shuttlesworth. That's blue chip. Oh no, no, no that's how he got he game. Got, he, he got, got game. He got when game. He got the two tens. No, uh, you know what? I didn't Let's even. Get... Whoa, whoa! Spitting chicklets meme's gonna put JVR's head <laughs> on Ray Allen's body, <laughs> and we're getting the fucking he got game scene with JVR at UNH. Jesus Van Reemsdyke. So. It's it's. I actually have a quick UNH story. So they play two step. Dave Matthews coming out when it's all dark. It's sick. Yeah. Do they still do that? 
Uh, I th- they had the last time I had been there. For All right. A game. Well, yeah, the yeah. other one they play is that like that life is yeah, life. Yeah. You know, the oh, great. Yeah, sc- yeah. Thank you for Everyone's those singing skills, along. mom. <laughs> uh, so this song. So we played UNH. Uh, in UNH Friday night, we lost six five. I was minus six. Dude, this is my freshman year. So I'm like, are you kidding me? What the hell? That might have just I, that might have just cost me five draft spots. <laughs> so the next we get back home. We're playing them Saturday night in Boston. So I wake up and. I get a, you know, go go into the shower. This is after pregame nap. What does my fucking roommate do? Brian Miller, New Jersey kid. <laughs> he throws on Life is Life, the jam that they played when I was dash six the night before. I came bombing out of the shower, butt naked. I go, what are you doing, dude? He goes, I love this song. I always listen to it before games. I don't care. You're minus six. I just clipped it off. He goes, fuck you. We got in a fight. Because our only fight is roommates because he's playing the song that I was dash six to the night before. So that's my UNH memory. You weren't exaggerating actually minus six? Minus six in a six-five game. Oof. Also, or it might have been six-one. I don't, that, I don't that remember. That expo- explains why I love you so much because I actually remember there was always a sign when we played against BC. They be had, you, be you. No, no, but BC, oh. they had Joe Whitney, and they had oh. on the sign it said BU's Whitney was better. So they must have been referring oh. to that. No. <laughs> no. You want to know why? You want to know why? Another UNH thing for the wit. My sophomore year, we're playing him in the hockey's oh, hockey's final. Who's, <laughs> hey, who's the interviewing who here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Did you take over the interview? I sometimes I can, I can. I can. Sometimes I talk a little bit too much, oh, but no, you I appreciate love it. this. I love it. So sophomore year, fast forward a year later, the only thing that happened in between the minus six and this is I was picked fifth overall. <laughs> so that night at the Hockey's final, which is packed, and UNH, I mean, dude, they bring 12,000 fans. To the, like, they're oh, yeah. wild fans. I don't yeah. know if they still are, but overtime, double overtime, I think. Tyson to Plitsky's uh, going wide on the D. Uh, on the D. He throws one on net. Off my stick, top shelf, lose the hockey championship to UNH. Oh. I scored on my own net. Next year, junior year, I'm skating around in warm-ups. There's three guys with Whitney UNH jerseys on in the front row laughing at me. So that's why they say the that's, BU's Whitney's better because I was incredible. the one that helped them out every time. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. All right, we can get back to interviewing Wasn't you. Wasn't uh, UNH a zoo? Was it a big party school when you were there? I remember my cousin. Yeah, it was, it was, was, insane yeah, it was definitely fun for sure. It was, uh, I got the full college experience to say <laughs> the least. Yeah. <laughs> Did you play with your bro? I missed him. So he was there... Uh, he took two years after high school, so he went as a 20-year-old freshman. So I think it was like 2011 he, he ended up getting in, and I was out of there in uh, 2009. Not often do guys who take two years out of high school before college end up making the NHL, and like yeah. that's a pretty he, impressive he, run yeah. by him after. He just kept getting better. He had kind of a crazy uh, sort of route and story. I mean, after his senior year of high school, it was kind of – he was thinking, okay, do I just go play D3 somewhere? Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? But he ended up deciding to go play a couple years in the EJ, started to get some interest. and Just kept went, getting better. Yeah, kept getting better, went to UNH, and then the rest was kind of history for him from there. So, Oh, shit. Yeah. So two years was enough for you, though. Then it was time to sign your two dominant seasons, and it was ready to go to the show? Yeah, from there, I think uh, I had wanted to go back for that second year. I, th- I thought we had a good chance at the World Juniors, and thought we were going to have a good team at UNH again. Next year, unfortunately, kind of fell short in both of those. But, uh, but yeah, I definitely don't regret it. I think uh, became a much better player, more complete. Leading scorer in that World Junior, though, weren't you? I, yeah, we had, we had some good <laughs> yeah, uh, individual. Yeah, I didn't include that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about um, that. I got, a, I got a question about college. Never went to college. That may come as a shock to you. But uh, I know Michigan had a crazy initiation process. Was there an initiation process at UNH for all you rookies? Uh, I don't know if it's, in, it's still uh, intact to what it was back then. I'm gonna guess no. It was. Uh, it was. Yeah. It was. So it was a week's. They worth canceled of, it uh, from cancel of, culture. Of stuff Hazy. that we, we got it. We got into there, but uh, um, at the end of it, like it's it's sort of kind of funny because at the start of it, it starts with the upperclassmen kind of being a little bit uh, hard on. Yeah, exactly. To all the to all the freshmen, and then at the end of it, you're all like boys so it was like i ended up being i thought a good team bonding yeah. sort of thing but uh but yeah i'm not sure how much of that goes on anymore yeah it's almost like a frat i remember i mean i only went to a d3 school but they were like fuck with these kids I'm like guys it's a d3 man settle down like he's not going anywhere up there there know? used to be stories of like in in junior b like 20 years ago where they used to tie a rope to your cock and then they they tie it to a pail and they throw it over like a, a pipe like on the on the roof. Are you thinking I of think the movie old school? Yeah. <laughs> That's old school. Oh, right? yeah, but I'm. I'm I, well, time out. <laughs> no, pe- no, but people copied that. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so like the, well, they would like old the, school would have copied them, yeah. but. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone knows it from old school. Like, I don't know necessarily if that's still happening, right? No, dude. Back in the day, you they used to a- ask you like multiple choice questions and shit, and every time you got one wrong, they used to throw a puck in the bucket. So I'd be tugging on your cock. 
that was something that old school probably stole from like back in the day. That was like a thing. That was but there was of, always enough leverage where your, your cock wasn't getting ripped off. And you well, were. dude, it was puck, so it would just be it was more for like how silly it was. And <sighs> and guys, man, the vets are standing there. They got guys with ropes tied around their cock. It's over the pipe, and then the, their buckets there, <laughs> and they're ask, answering questions, and they're throwing pucks in the bucket. Let me tell know, you about this guy named Flounder. I went to school with. <laughs> <laughs> That's a movie biz. All right. Well, anyway. Hey, now were you a Flyers fan growing up? This is what I want to ask you about. Like, where's the line of demarcation between Devils fans and Flyers fans? Yeah, I, I grew up probably about. Uh, like 30 minutes north of that line where it definitely becomes more Philly fans uh, or from where I was from but I was a Rangers fan growing up we oh were, you were a Rangers fan yeah, oh okay took the train into the garden all the time to see games and stuff like that so that was that was always a, a, a special it still is one of my favorite well I line. guess we gotta ask who was your favorite player favorite player was Adam Graves growing up yeah. really yeah. saying oh, yeah. a god too yeah, so he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was uh, he was he was a vicious he was, player he too. was he was I think again some stuff that I've tried to take into my game, just get around the net and stuff like that. And I actually got a chance to meet him. Uh, um, when was it? I think right after the draft, I got a chance to meet him. And I've got, I've crossed paths him a couple more times in Toronto and stuff like that. And he's just just a unbelievable guy, just a great person. Your draft, your second overall, correct, R.A.? You might have mentioned that. I'm mm-hmm. sorry if I missed it. Sorry. But any memories from that draft? Was there any ch- – like you knew it was going to be second for a long time? I mean, how did that all go down? Yeah, I remember bef- going into the whole process, uh, meeting with Philly, and they were, told me that if I was uh, there that they were going to take me. And, oh, they said that uh, right and, too. Yeah, pretty much told me before that was going to well, – that was their decision. And uh, actually at the draft, it was pretty funny. I had, I had like 15 or so buddies that have come to some big events, like whether it's the draft or World Juniors yeah. or whatever, my first game. So they were at the draft and they were en- enjoying themselves in the crowd, like le- all the festivities and all this stuff. So when Dale Talon's up there picking for the Blackhawks, uh, he's like saying, oh, we're proud to announce, proud to select. And one of my buddies screams out, and you're going to pick Reamer. And he, you see him stop and he like looks up right to where they're standing and he goes, and we picked Patrick Kane of the London Knights or whatever it is. But he actually like, looks up, he though. He looks up. You can see it in the video right to where they're <laughs> sitting, like right in the upper deck there. But uh, that wow. was fun to have all those guys there with me. And. They've been at some uh, other events over the course of my career and stuff, too. So that's been a lot of fun. I don't really remember that. Like, leading up, was Kane consensus one or no? I mean, uh, that, that whole shockingly season. enough, probably not as consensus right? as he should have been. Well, he <laughs> yes. was, yeah, he, I mean, he was yeah. so undersized that I, yeah. I don't remember it being like a lock and shut case that no, whole year. I, I remember even going into that year, I think, uh, into that season, he was maybe not even ranked in the first round, which was crazy because I was played with him. He was a year older than me at the U.S. program, so you saw him breaking all these records and literally just – toying with guys out there sick. and how sick he was and and uh and then i think at the world juniors that year he pretty much cemented himself like as the top guy that was kind of at a time where size was still a factor where people took that into consideration where you know they're probably looking at him like this guy's a man child and yeah and for sure still, go, at least yeah. going it, it, it was switching over a little bit it was that was but like that hughes t- doesn't go first overall without patrick kane i don't think or johnny gaudreau right i mean it's changed yeah. things a little bit right 100 percent. you're right yeah. you're right like who who and even maybe a guy who probably got bumped back this year was a kid who went to the canadians Ca- is it caufield yeah. Cole, Cole, Cole yeah, Caulfield, yeah. He is a really he's, small. He's dude. tiny, but he's, and he's lighting to, it up already. He's lighting Cole, it yeah. up. A lot of, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Say a lot of front offices are like size queens. You know yeah. What size queens are? No. The girls who only like big, big wrenches. That's what they call size queens. <laughs> big, they want the BBD. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. Um, so we've been asking guys uh, recently, well, I guess since we started, um, draft, when you go to the draft, you sometimes have these meetings with these teams. You probably didn't go to many teams because you knew you were going so high. Any like crazy questions or, or any 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 guys challenging you in the room? Um, I'm trying to remember. I think the two things I remember were the Islanders had like a very long, weird like uh, I think it was like a personality test or something. I remember that being a little bit weird. Nothing specific about that, but like a I, written one. Yeah, like a written one, like super long and super weird. And I was asking my agent, like, "What is? What's the point of this?" Again? What do I say to this one? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but that was one thing that I really remember. And then I remember that with my meeting with the Blue Jackets, uh, they were because I was one of the, one guy I really loved watching growing up was Rick Nash. So obviously they uh, drafted him, and and he turned into a hell of a player. And um, they were just talking to me about that. They're like, uh, so he's like, because I think they're picking maybe seventh that year. They're like. Uh, what do we what do we do if we want to get you and i'm like i i don't know what, what do you mean because i was expecting to go a little bit higher and they're like well well rick nash told we we asked him the same thing and he told us to trade up so we traded up to one to go get him 
So like that. You're that like, well, that, I just failed that one. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> just failed that one. So that was kind of a funny story. <laughs> Is that about, a true story? Yeah, that was my draft. Yeah. He did. He did yeah. say that to them. Yeah, so. so I mean, they can't expect you to necessarily right away. They're like, cross yeah. him yeah. off the list. No confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no shit. If you said trade up to get me, they'd be like, you're not good. Enough. Yeah, exactly. You were hey, a loser. Hey, took Columbus year. one yeah. question for fucking Islanders. You had to fill out a whole brochure. <laughs> <laughs> they knew right away to the point. So your rookie year with the Flyers, you walk in. Chris Pronger, I imagine that's his locker room. Is, is was he tough on you? Or did he bother with you? Did he like how's he how's he treat a rookie like you first time? Um, room? yeah, you know what? Well, his first year in Philly was my first year in Philly too. So oh, I think okay. at the start he was kind of he wasn't going to be completely completely yeah. Pronger. Yeah, half yeah. Him a game. only a half yeah. a dick. No, he, he a was dick. he was uh, he was great. I remember before that season too, like I was just getting there early to for camp and stuff, and he had me over to his house for like a barbecue or something. Um, but, but yeah, there's definitely times I remember because I, my stall was right next to him as he was number 20, I was 21. So in the, uh, in the change room, my stuff tended to leak over a little bit onto nope. his, oh. nope. no, not JVR on his lazy. Not on front so he, he gave me a few warnings and then one time I found, uh, a pair of shoes in the hot tub, but uh, <laughs> they, they were just a pair of just training shoes, so it wasn't the end of the world, but the uh, message was received. How about when he, was, when he clips his fingernails in between periods, too? Clips his fingernails in between every period. You're like, prongs, there's nothing there to clip. But yeah, I mean, he's like just a dominating presence. We've yeah, talked about him a bunch. Later. I wonder if that's because he, his skates were so small. I don't know, he's, yeah, he's got little small yeah. feet. He's got some, right, but maybe he liked them. He liked them so tight where he had to clip them every period. Maybe that little. No, not his toenails. <laughs> his his fingernails. Oh, his fingernails. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't. Th I don't think he was doing yeah. his toenails. I thought you said pedicure, not manicure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did anybody sort of take you under the, under their wing a little bit? You know, show you the ropes a little bit. Yeah, like, well, a guy like him was great too. I mean, he used to before practices and stuff. Like he kind of he would he he'd take me out there and he'd start wiring slappers at me. He's like, you're gonna tip all these. So like. That was oh, stuff, nice. something that helped me really develop uh, that part of my game. And then we had guys like, again, like Scotty Hartnell was there my first year. Uh, he was incredible. Great to me. guy. Like, yeah. Just the best teammate. Uh, couldn't ask for a better guy to kind of learn the ropes from. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, Danny Briere, Mike Richards, Carter. Oh, man. Me and G lived together at a uh, – we <laughs> we were uh, – right right after they told us we made the team, we're thinking about, okay, we might, we're we going to live together. We're going to live close by. What are we going to do? And we're talking to Paul Holmgren. Um, about uh, just about getting a place, and he, and G asked him, "Hey, so can we live downtown?" Because a lot of the guys live downtown then. And he goes, "If you guys want to live downtown, you can go live in downtown Glens Falls, which is where the <laughs> HL team was." <laughs> yeah, well, so, they're yeah, coming off yeah. the loops, uh, upbeat yeah. crew of like, let's chill on the downtown young guys. So, 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 so we ended up after that in a in a fifty five and over like condo community somehow and just near the like, practice near rank. the practice rank with one of the assistant coaches lived to check up on us every once in a while so took a definitely a uh, little turn turn of direction there hey what do you think of uh Giroux's new teeth he likes smiling now oh right? doesn't he, <laughs> he does. they look those very, jibs are nice has white. he changed has he changed because i mean you lived with him your first year like the, is is he more confident now because he's got his new grill He's smiled way more since he's gotten those new uh, those new teeth, and I've definitely noticed that. I don't know how, how many years has he had those now for. Is it, it I, well, because because you went away to Toronto yeah, oh, for yeah. a little bit, right? And you come back, yeah, and all of a sudden this guy's a movie star in yeah. the locker room. It's like holy uh, shit, a hundred percent. He's the same thing. It's like I remember uh, Bozak did the same thing. He got some fresh pearly whites, and all of a sudden they're the most smiley guys ever. So <laughs> that's a guy yeah. you played with in Toronto. Yeah. Um, he you, loves so the action. I heard. <laughs> Bozy. <laughs> he likes golf the course, mix, yeah. all, all the, the, the sports gambling. I got to get to know that guy. Yeah, whatever he can get his hands on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. What's what's the craziest bet that he's made since you have uh, since you were a teammate with him? It was wow. him and Phil, like tag team. Yeah, you know what? Bets. That'd be a better question for Phil because I know those guys were uh, kind well, of partners in crime. It was for basketball. Stuff, I think they were like, crushing yeah. basketball. I remember going over there they, when they lived together. The, uh, Phil had basically uh, Tiger Woods, the maybe? setup. He had the... Uh, the one big TV with the three little ones on the top for uh, <laughs> to catch all the games that he needed to catch, keep his eye on things. So, so I know those guys are pretty uh, into it. Then he was a big gamer too, video games. Uh, Bo yeah, Bozy, he was on there a bunch. Yep. Were yeah. you playing with him, Tiger Woods? Uh, when he, oh, they were playing uh, like Call of Duty and stuff, I think when by the time I had gotten there and I was never really into that one. So. Good for you, yeah. nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are bringing their can councils on the road now. Any any guys on the Flyers bringing them? No, that, that was getting big in uh, in TO though when I was there. A bunch of the guys were bringing them on the on the road, so definitely a little bit different uh, from when my first year. I remember remember coming in the league, and I actually was talking to Aaron Asham a couple uh, a couple days ago. It reminded me of this, but uh, 
I remember, like before my first camp, I'm like like wide eyed, just going in there trying to figure out what the hell's going on, like with all these new new guys, new teammates. And I remember one of the first things he said to me was, uh, "Hey kid, you want to be an NHLer? You got to start drinking like one." That was like his words of advice before I started my first year. So, <laughs> so that means, so that you means the, ga- the, day. the, you the, the games, that day. The, yeah, the games changed a little bit uh, since then. But he was another guy again. He was a a great teammate and someone who always had my back. Uh, out there on the ice, one me, him, and uh, G actually had some good good chemistry my uh, my first year. Uh, the playoffs, your rookie year, the huge comeback against the Bruins down 0-3. Mm-hmm. Were you ever part of anything like that at all before? Any, any yeah. you know, going down to mites or anything? No, nothing to that level. That was uh, that was insane. I think uh, I, that that was such a crazy year. Just just because again, it was my first introduction to pro hockey, and I remember before that year, we were the favorite. Uh, to basically getting picked by a lot of people to win the cup and we came out of the gates really slow and we're like last in the league by like maybe a little after Thanksgiving and then we have the coaching change and we're kind of battling it out we end up getting into the playoffs in the last uh, oh, day yeah, of the right. regular season and that shootout yeah Bush with the big big save and then the, the Lundquist uh, fist pump he did after with the yeah. save <laughs> um, and then yeah just that roller coaster ride I think we had a a few goalies get hurt and go down and then we just kept finding ways to win so even though we were down three nothing it it felt like it didn't feel like that was how far apart the series was so again we had that i think we had a couple overtime games in there maybe game four was ot to keep pushing it along and then get to game seven and we're down three nothing right, right off yeah. the hop so I, I think there was like five or so minutes left in the in the first the laviolette called the timeout and we were able to get one and then I remember Ga- Ryan, Gagne was, was so good in that game. Yep. That guy was yeah. filthy, and he was yeah. he was was struggling with injuries. I think at that concussion point, wasn't yeah, it? right. I think he had uh, he came yeah. back. He had something. I think he broke a bone or something like that. And that at that point of uh, oh. of the season, but but yeah, no, he definitely was battling through some injuries over the course of those couple of years. Yeah. What like the, so that that's your rookie year, and you played every playoff game, right? So what, I missed a couple of them. I think I. Uh, yeah, and the final, I maybe got taken out of one. Or so what line? This was gonna say, what line were you playing? I was on? mostly playing with uh, G and uh, Asham. That As was, like a third line, yeah, that was our third line. But then yeah. you could create offense too. Yeah, like yeah. Giroux, you. I mean, right away, you must have been like, oh my god, this guy is gonna be just ridiculous, huh? Yeah, for sure. Like, because like, Briere's so good at that point, you're like, he's doing, he can do the same things, and he's so young. Exactly, and and just the stuff that he could do, and and again, it was kind of a. I think then it was even a little bit different, where like he didn't he had to earn every bit of the extra power play time and stuff like that. Like they weren't like now I feel like it's a little bit different where yeah, you get more, a little more, opp- you. you get a little more opportunity a little bit earlier on to almost show you can't, uh, you can't do it versus the other way around. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously from, uh, right away, uh, G came in Sick. and he pretty much, yeah, he was, he was fun to get a chance to play with then. And, and now I was going to ask about that off season when, when Carter and Richards were traded. Like how yeah. fucking shocked were you? Like that? That's belief in you and G right away, right? right? That's yeah. immediately what people are saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was. I think that was the year. So I think those guys got traded. I think I actually ended up signing like an extension at the end of that summer. So obviously they were thinking of moving in a different direction. But um, I was actually listening to Richie with you guys the other day. He's great, huh? Yeah, he, yeah, he was. Uh, he was awesome. But but no, I think we had such a uh, a good group there with that, and obviously they wanted to shake the boat up, but. Um, yeah, it was one of those things where uh, definitely shocking. Like, obviously, your your pillar of your fr- of the franchise at that point, it was signed for another twelve years, and I think Hearts <laughs> had just signed for eleven years or something, and then they ended up deciding to go a little bit different direction. But uh, but yeah, I mean, at that point, it pretty much wakes you up to the business side of it. Yeah. And you realize that pretty much anyone can anyone's anyone has a price for anyone. You you mentioned you listened to the Richards interview. Did you sense the tension between him and Laviolette a little bit? Uh, you know, th- again, I don't know if I was just so oblivious when I was when I was that age and just like just not you're just a hockey nerd. <laughs> yeah. You're just like I don't know what's going on. I just want to play. I, 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 hadn't, I don't. I was not like really overly. I, I couldn't. I didn't sense any things like that. Uh, like I, f- I feel like early in my career, I, was, I had no like awareness for that at all. Like as far as if there was any tension with that sort of stuff. I mean, now being uh, a little bit more experienced and having and you, you kind of notice things a little bit more now and see the different dynamics that go on but i feel like then it's like i had uh, you could like the it could have the sky could have been falling down in front of me i probably wouldn't have even <laughs> known what was going on <laughs> are you in uh carter and richards you guys still keep in touch because sometimes maybe the fact that they maybe moved on from them 
I wouldn't say there would be resentment on their standpoint, but like they thought that you guys were maybe the new guys who could get it done and get them over the hump. When you know they, you know, there's a lot of pride involved at this at this level, right? Yeah, no, for sure. I think I uh, for both those guys, I've I've kept in touch with them a little bit over the years. Richie was actually at one of our games the other night, so I got a chance to catch up with him. So happy to see he's uh, doing well, enjoying life uh, out of his uh, place in uh, Kenora and down in Florida. So. Uh, so yeah, it's good to hear he's uh, doing well. Carts I haven't talked to in a little bit longer, but uh, but yeah, they were both really good to me uh, when I came into the league. You just mentioned the extension you signed. Then the similar thing happened to you. They trade you less than a year after the mm-hmm. extension. How bummed out were you? You felt like you're part of the future here, and then they ship you off to Toronto. Yeah, you know what? I think um, it was a weird sort of year The from that point after I signed the extension. I think I had... That, that next year I dealt with some uh, some different injuries and stuff like that, and it just didn't seem to... The fit just didn't Nothing seem to clicking. be. It wasn't clicking yeah. or whatever, and I kind of was thinking that something might be happening around the draft. Was with, my, with what my agent was telling me, and just what was kind of going on and that sort of stuff. So when I finally ended up getting the call that I was going to Toronto, I wasn't necessarily completely shocked. I mean, I, you're obviously shocked to some degree, but you know, I wasn't completely caught off guard. I wouldn't say. Uh, you went from Philly to Toronto, so you're probably used to crazy fans. Was it to another <laughs> level when you got to Toronto or what? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> definitely playing in Philly was a good, uh, I guess, warm-up. A, warm to deal a good with primer. It. <laughs> yeah, to deal with. That uh, was pregame skate. Uh, yeah, to, to deal with uh, T.O. Uh, and uh, just the passion of, uh, of everyone up there. But, uh, yeah, no, it was uh, certainly, uh, certainly a hockey market for sure. Now, you, you were wearing number 21 when you got there, and then they ended up retiring. It was Borgia Salming's number. Yeah. How did that all play out? I mean, I know normally there's a yeah. negotiation, but did you just, no. you know, here you go, buddy. You were, you were No, they're it. like, hey, you don't get, you don't get <laughs> to wear this anymore. Like, Where's yeah. my watch, You're bitch? Yeah. Yeah. No, I will. Th- th- that summer, I remember I was, I was back home uh, in, in Jersey. I'm usually not there too often, so I was there with... Uh, with my with my parents and I saw a couple of missed calls from uh, Brendan Shanahan. I'm like, oh, oh, shit, oh, here oh. we go. Where am I going? What's Batman, going on? Oh, oh, no. Batman's I thought, calling I was, again. I, I think it was maybe before the last year of my or going into the last year of my contract. So I was maybe thinking something might be up, and he ended up calling me and telling me what was going on. And obviously, again, to, uh, lots so much history in Toronto with how many uh, good players and teams they've had there over the years. So obviously, honoring a guy like that, it's it's a no brainer to to do something like that. Didn't cost them a rolly. <laughs> yeah, he handled it the right way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, you're a fellow uh, thespian as well. You are in the movie This Is 40. Yep. How'd, uh, how'd, that, how'd that come about? Was somebody buddies with the producers? <laughs> what is thespian? What's a thespian? Uh, yeah. I'm glad you followed that up with what that was because I had no idea what it's, that uh, It's a, a thespian, <laughs> a, an act. It's just a fancy word. It's from an old... Oh, the, come oh, on, all right. It's from an SNL. It's from an SNL. It's an old Saturday Night Live skit with John Lovitz. He's like, I was merely acting. It, that's where it's from, the thespian. Fair enough, okay. It's a Saturday Night Live. All right. So anyways... Five thousand thousand of our listeners yeah. will be fucking well, on the floor laughing right now because they get RAs. Do you get paid for that? I still get actually some residual checks. No. Get oh, out of yeah. here. It's yep. like, a, like 100 bucks or so every uh, every year. So but it's like, you say residual yeah. kills? No, no, <laughs> checks, checks. How long do you want to Do you have the option? <laughs> <laughs> do you get to check the box for the option? Uh, well, yeah, that was, yeah. So what the scene in the movie is probably like 40, 30 seconds maybe or yeah. something like that. And I think we were there from like, 5 a.m. to like 3 the next day so it was, it was like a, like almost a 24-hour wow. day it was pretty pretty long but was it uh, worth the hundred dollar checks <laughs> <laughs> cross it off the bucket list I guess. Yeah, I yeah absolutely yeah what were your like thoughts when you got to toronto right because with all the pressure comes you know these the expectations are there the team's starting to get better um yeah. You know, you never really could get over the hump when you guys were in the playoffs. Like, yeah. what, what did what did you just take away from being there and the teams that you did play with? Yeah, it was it was incredible. I think just the whole experience of it. I think you did uh, like being a, playing I, up there. Yeah, I, I, it was awesome. I think uh, just I remember right away after I, I talked to Brian Burke, he told me what was like I was that was coming to Toronto, and then next next call is uh, unknown number, and I don't usually uh, answer those and. Sure enough, it's Dion. So now I know every time oh. I get a call from one of those unknown numbers, that's Dion. Yeah. <laughs> that's Dion on the phone. I better answer. So he called me and was he? I mean, as far as uh, being a, a good teammate, he's got to be up there as one of the best. I mean, he was 
so he, he's just so welcoming to everyone and really takes guys under his wing and really just shows them how to be professional and he's his literally reps, got a his guy. Rep's phantom his <laughs> rep is a little bit phantom that people yeah. don't realize how Seriously, good a guy is. And he used to get shit on in toronto like crazy yeah, him and, between him and phil <laughs> they those two guys took it on the chin they for did. a long time yeah no for sure they definitely did i mean uh um yeah i think because of all that like some of us got the fly under the radar a little bit which is oh, kind of it's nice, nice. I was say, like, <laughs> you, you had some real nice years there but i don't remember you ever really catching any heat i'm sure yeah. there, there yeah, was there, times, there's always some it's always funny there i mean it's a little bit shrapnel. different you, you get it yeah if a few games go by you haven't scored a goal yeah. you, you definitely you're you're aware of how long that is for sure you know you're reminded of that but uh but no i think again that uh playing with that little degree of uh spotlight and pressure i think that's something i really enjoyed and had a lot of fun uh with all that was uh people good at coordinating parties when you're in toronto or what Did we get a little oh, man, he was awesome <laughs> yeah he'd be the guy on the night out we, we wouldn't uh we wouldn't see him and then all of a sudden we at the very end of the night he'd be at the place what's up boys how you guys doing and then where be, you been loops <laughs> he's like uh places that you're not cool enough balls to deep to. that's where i've been <laughs> Balls deep. <laughs> no, yeah, he was great. He was, he was a uh, fun. W player. So, what's the story we keep getting tweeted about about uh, Kessel chirping you when you got traded? Like, don't forget who made you or something oh, like no. that. Oh man, that was great. So, uh, so it was my first. I think, or no, the first game after he got traded uh, to Pitt. We're playing them in Pitt, and um, uh, yeah, we're out there lining up for the opening face off, and I'm, I'm like smiling at him. And like I give him a little whack on like the top of the laces just to just to fuck with him a little bit. <laughs> and uh, he looks over at me and he goes, "James, don't forget who made you a player in this league." <laughs> so he, in that whiny uh, little voice. Yeah. Oh man, it was awesome. So he's always good for those those uh, one liner, those little jabs like that. So yeah, he's he's classic. Could he be the most undercover cocky guy in the league? <laughs> I don't think it's that <laughs> undercover. He, no, Phil knows how good he is. Yeah, well, I think right, the yeah. public perception yeah. is he's just kind of like, eh, I don't really give a shit. But what, he's just like, oh, he's yeah, he for sure, yeah, he's I, he's, he's confident. confident, yeah, very confident. Well, yeah. what about like I love the clips when they showed and you saw it in Pittsburgh with him and, and he gets on the bench and he's like, God ah, there, you could you must have caught that rap <laughs> oh, one time. We, Move the fucking puck, yeah, James. Yeah, me, 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 me and Bozy. Sitting there looking over at Phil, he'd be having a meltdown. You know, two, two sticks would be snapped over the boards. Uh, oh, it was unbelievable. He'd be, he'd be yelling at the trainers about the sticks, but uh, oh man, it was awesome. He was so classic, and he was so good. God, yeah, seriously, yeah. the way he could score there was sick. Yeah. One of your current teammates, we've got to bring him up. Kind of hot. <laughs> we were talking about this before the interview started, yeah. and and uh, yeah. apparently they they tweeted out cat a hat on Twitter. Yeah, flyers. Twitter. And that's how it all came up. And 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 JVR, what'd you say about the boys in the locker room? Yeah, every time before we go out on the ice, all the boys are saying it. Just like I don't know if we can do it as well as RA does, but giving him a nice little. He's not even doing hot. anything. He's <laughs> just saying the guy's name. Cat a hat. I said to my wife, like, I was like, if I actually say Carter Hart, I sound like a fucking <laughs> asshole. You know what I mean? Like. I, <laughs> Well, you don't have to say it. Like Could this just turn into a Western movie or what? Say it without like that. Just say it like Carter Hart. Carter Hart. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a thespian. Now say it like you say it. Kind of hot. There you go. Yeah. We don't know who's the best you. at it. Hazy, probably. Oh, yeah. He's, he, 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 grew up with he it, just so. says it too. Yeah, yeah. He's G, like, he's, G can't get it past his teeth. No, so G, yeah, kind of G can't get it out there. Of there. Of well, what about coming back to Philly? I mean, that's a, it was free agent signing. Yeah. So. How many teams were in the mix? Did you know like this is where you wanted to be? How did that all go down? Yeah, I think just going into it, I th um, with Toronto telling me going before going into that free agency period that I wasn't going to be in the plans going forward. I think that kind of helped me go into. Did that things. piss you off a little? Um, in the sense of, I mean, obviously, at my I loved my time there and all that stuff. But but that being said, I think it was better that it didn't get dragged out. Where I where at the end of the day, you have to make maybe more of an emotional decision where you can make a clean decision where you're. Clean Don't break up. Clean, yeah, exactly. So they told me going into that, so I thought it was good. It kind of helps you make your closure with uh, what, what had happened and then try to have your best frame of mind going into obviously a pretty big decision for the next uh, stage of your career. So I think, again, going into it that way, I think uh, – Obviously, after getting traded, you don't necessarily think you're going to end up in the same place twice. I know. And uh, someone told me before, uh, before I signed that contract, I was like, well, you've only signed deals with the Flyers in your career. Like, my obviously, my entry level and the yeah. other two. But, uh, but yeah, so just going into it just seemed like uh, 
a good fit as far as uh, the kind of the the way the team was uh, set up and uh, the way they're trending. Lots of youth, I think, on the way and stuff like that. And then obviously it didn't hurt uh, to be uh, close to home, as I know my, yeah. my parents love being able to come down the games. And that's maybe not necessarily a reason, but it's a nice perk to have to be able to share all of it with uh, with the family and stuff like that. So. So, yeah, they're, they're, those are some of the reasons, but mostly, obviously, the hockey ones, uh, like I mentioned, won out as far as just thinking the, the fit was good and liking the, the, the direction of, uh, of the team. Does it feel different in the room this year? I mean, as, as an observer and a degenerate gambler, it seems like you guys got a little more uh, pizzazz this year than, than last year. Yeah, I think, again, uh, obviously, uh, too. If, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, just the way we've kind of started games has been way better for whatever reason this year, I think just be, we're not chasing games as much so i think it becomes a lot harder to play that way i mean you can't you, you just run out of steam at the end of the year i think that kind of caught up with us last year we went on a little run there in kind of january february and ended up just at the end of the year just not having enough to obviously make the final push but certainly this year it seems like again we're we're getting off to better starts we're putting ourselves in better positions to win games based on that and and just setting ourselves up to to be successful longer because of all that. I'm guessing that Alain Vigneault has a lot to do with that too, right? Yeah, he's been great. I think uh, he's he's very progressive uh, as far as just kind of things about how he views are around the game. So like we're, he's doing a really good job as far as helping us uh, be recovered in between games and really smart about when we practice and how we practice. Pre-game um, skates are done? Pre-game right? skates are pretty much done now. So I think that's, again, another thing. It's like he's using all the, the science and the data and trying to – help us uh, give us the best advantage we can to feel good uh, every night so which is sometimes good. difficult for those old school coaches yeah. Oh, and yeah. I mean yeah. let's go down the list here you got yeah. Michelle Terrian too who <laughs> listen I love Terrian I guess he's the man as the assistant is too. he really Hazy, Hazy said he's been great he's I mean, still ripping darts it's different yeah. as an assistant <laughs> yeah. coach you can be the best guy in the world you don't so, you, yeah I, I definitely you know what I think the like you said that when you're the assistant you're not the you're not you, the you don't have to be the, you don't have to be the, the hard ass. yeah you don't have to be that guy so I think uh, certainly for him, he's someone who was a head coach as long as he was. I'm sure it's a little bit of an uh, of an adjustment to to do it a little bit different here, but but uh, I think he seems to be enjoying it. He's joking around with guys and stuff like that. So um, so yeah, guys have uh, really liked him so far. What about Yozy? You guys got Yozy too, don't you? Yep, yep, exactly. He's been great too. I think again, like you said, another guy's been a head coach for a while now for the last what six seven years or whatever it was, maybe even longer. Yeah. Uh, before that, but yeah, he's definitely seems like he's enjoyed kind of the the things about coaching. I think that would be fun is the the relationships with guys and uh, the more of the one on one stuff that you get to do as an assistant. I think than you can be as a head. I feel I feel like Yozi was the perfect assistant too because he was. I mean, he's a guy's guy. He For was sure. tough as yeah. nails, good yeah. team player. So um, we we got to talk to you about State and Liberty. Yeah. I didn't realize you'd invested in that, and, yeah. and they've done a a little bit of advertising on our podcast. Great. Um, uh, dress wear that stretches. It's yeah. hockey players, right? Well, I guess yeah. I'll let you describe yeah. it. Yeah, so it started, um, I think it was like maybe five or six years ago now, and uh, one of the guys was a Michigan hockey player, Lee Mafia. I had grown up playing against them, and we had the same agent, and I think it was probably like four years ago, maybe after a year after they had gotten in um, uh, into what they were doing. They kind of, uh, th those guys approached me about uh, about maybe getting involved a little bit, and and stuff like that and again i was always interested in just trying new things out and maybe it's something to i don't know when i'm done playing hockey you get into something a little bit different who knows so have these um, guys i mean i can't imagine they ever thought it would be like they are growing they're at a rapid it. pace <laughs> yeah, and, they're doing a great job yeah. so at the beginning it was yeah. something that was kind of a pipe dream i'm guessing and now it's like holy shit we've really turned this into yeah, a business yeah yeah for sure i think again just how it's grown year in and year out has been from just again obviously just someone who gets kept a kept the breast from from afar of what's going on you're just like when uh, am i getting my checks uh, guys? <laughs> well he's oh, he's got the movie checks coming in he's got the state of liberty checks coming in 200 bucks a month right there yeah. it's like clo clothing for athletes i should probably oh pass. fuck oh. you guys should do a photo shoot with ra in your clothing <laughs> they're like it's not photo it's not clothes yeah. for zamboni drivers he's like wait so it's not supposed to fit three times big uh, i think they cropped your ass off sir it's like i uh, know I, I left that in the womb <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh what's what, uh, what about gritty what, what's the feelings about gritty in the room he's like, in the, the room right now for check he's fucking <laughs> staring at us that's why he's getting paid so much he's double dipping 
Yeah. Voracek oh. just showed up in the in the hotel room here. We're gonna he's on deck right oh, now. Shit. We're gonna just what, what should we ask? I heard this, I heard Voracek just rips up concerts pregame. He just loves music and oh, he's got some great tunes. Being a Jersey guy, he got some uh, Bruce Springsteen going on. <laughs> so some some of the guys, I don't know if they're into that uh, classic rock, but I, I can definitely appreciate it. What else uh, should we grill him about? Well, I actually wanted to pump his tires. I like bringing up people who get... Oh, you're talking about Voracek? I was talking about JVR quick. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, because I, I, I just remembered I didn't bring up before in the move from Toronto back to Philly. This is one of those guys, career year in the contract. Oh, you fucker. I did it. He did it. That's what it's all about. Like, what was how, how great was that? You just knew like, if, if there's ever time to light it up. <laughs> wait, wait. The time and, is now. And, and Voracek just goes, and I did it <laughs> to me. So, so we'll get into yours too. Yeah, we're going to have to save that. <laughs> but uh, just the time, would you have 36 goals? I yeah, mean, what a season. Was, yeah, for sure. I think uh, going into that year, obviously you want, you, you're. Yeah, because it's anxiety. You get, yeah, you got the little bit of that because you don't know what's going to be coming next. Uh, and want to put yourself in as best a position as you can. So obviously you get off to a nice little roll and start feeling good. And then, uh, Boom. yeah, exactly. I think down the stretch, I had a couple, a uh, couple, two or three goal games and then just start, you start feeling good. <laughs> cha -ching, about cha -ching. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. Every <laughs> single one at a hundred thousand at 300,000. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like take 25% off a sales tax. Take 25 <laughs> sales tax. <laughs> yeah. Not when you're signing in Philly, yeah. you're getting bent over. No fucking lube, no spit, sandpaper finish. <laughs> Freedom, but uh, anything else you guys want to ask him? No, oh, do I? I, yeah. I got, I got, I, I, I love watching you play. I appreciate that you've listened to our podcast for a while now. So I mm -hmm. want to say thank you for that. And yep. thanks for coming and seeing the boys. Well, I guess we got to end it with p some people who listen, don't know what the goalie challenge is. Cause it hasn't been going on for the last year, year and a half, probably. Right. It's a yeah, while. It's been you, a while. Did he just write you? He's like, let's go. So the yeah. goalie challenge is what? Best out of 10. Well, when I, so the, when he first started it, I remember it, I'll never forget it. He showed up at like, I think it was, uh, it was KFC, Prez and uh, Feidelberg and they all showed up. We literally met at like this. I was uh, training at that time in uh, like Stanford, Connecticut and they just showed up at this like random, I think it was like a tennis court or something and I see them with like a street hockey net in the back. I'm like, what the hell am I to get myself into? So I made sure I tried to disrespect him a little bit. I showed up wearing like a pair of flip flops, just showing like whatever, just to get him rattled and he got, Dave got a little oh, bent really? out of shape sensitive? about it. But uh, you're not yeah, taking so this like serious? He, they didn't, he didn't know what he, like what we didn't know what we, or what it was gonna, uh, as far as like, he's like, yeah, we, maybe you do some breakaways, maybe you do some shots from like far away. So it kind of was very like, Loosely, wow, right so more okay. Van Reem's like saying, he, Yeah, it's like 10 more yeah. feet, please. Yeah. Yeah. Van Reem's like basically saying, uh, Prez cheated. So I well, feel well, like, well, I will say this he, back, he was a little more now. If you watch him, like, because I did it again like a couple of years ago, oh, you but did. uh. But he's like he, he's learned how to like cut the angle down. So like, well, uh, he, he was got, also a yeah. hundred pounds heavier. He was like Vladikov in the commercial that just stuck in between the yeah. posts. Now he's a skinny bastard. The walrus one that's on NHL uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. network. They're chucking him. I can't instead, score. They're chucking him Adderall instead of the fish in the commercial. <laughs> well, uh, we right, well, thank you for coming. Thank man. you so Thanks. much, right, buddy. Yeah. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that interview. And once again, thank you to Can I Brands for their support of the Spit and Chicklets podcast and the ECHL Player Relief Fund. Make sure to check out canibrands.com and enter promo code BIZ30 for 30% off all products site-wide. And as mentioned on previous interviews, if you guys wanna to head to the ECHL website and or social channels, there's a GoFundMe set up for the Player Relief Fund, and uh, we wish them and all of you the best.